right here. What I'm doing right now is I'm prepping to put corners on it, and I have these pieces of angle iron which I cut with my grinder, which is kind of hard to put on each corner, and uh, that'll be what the wood nails to. But first, I got to remove the jacks. I removed all three of them, see, but one. They're welded on twice, and I grind at each weld, and I hit it with a hammer until she snaps. But that's what I'm doing right now. This one I'm about to weld. This is going to be one of the corners. They're about 35 inches from their high. I like how high they are compared to the trailer. It gives a good bit for a haul and scrap and also a hang. And then I'll have pieces of wood that run in between them. And also I might have a wood deck or one of those uh, metal mesh decks if I can get that metal. But yeah, I'm about to start welding. Let's buy a cheap welder. <laughs> I uh, always I grind at a spot so it would uh, have where I could put my ground on it. To grind it there. And let's try it. I got all four of my sides done. All the corners. All the stuff on it. It's turn turn dark now. Yeah, this one, not very beautiful. I did do a wrap around. If you look, I did the weld going around that way a little bit. Same on that side to grip it. So I want it to work. Kinda. Yeah. I hope it's good enough though. I don't know. If it's not good enough, I might experiment with different rods. <laughs> So, yeah, I might actually put a bolt through there too. Go home and put a bolt. They're all like that. Pretty. And uh, they're 35 inches high off of the metal off the uh, trailer. So it's going to be ample room to haul pine straw. Each pine straw is about, belt is about uh, 12 inches high. About three almost. So perfect. But yeah, I'll take off clamps and test them. It's now day two. But I'm not liking my welds too much. They're wobbly, don't feel so real secure. I've grinded them real well, trying to you know, make sure they're real welds. I've been using, um, let's see, yeah, this one, which is Farmer's Rod 13. Yeah, Rio 13. I'm going to try a 7018. So you can see that one. 1 16th of the inch. See if that makes a difference. These I tried earlier and I had trouble welding with them. But now I'm better with welding, I might try it. See if it'll work. Here's my uh, piece I'm going to try on. A few pieces of um, metal that were like an angle. I made them into like an angle iron. And we'll see if it, uh, how strong that weld is once I use that. And then if so, I'll use that on everything. Well, the welds of that other uh, is it 718 rod. Not very good. They broke, and it was very hard to get an arc. Now this one, this is one I did with uh, with a uh, uh, 3013. It looks pretty good, but I still want to get it better. See what happens is down here the bottom's kind of moving. I have a clamp on that one. This one I went to town. I did a lot of welding on this one, but still. It has movement. I don't like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the trailer over and do from up under here. That way it'll be better to get down there and do the welds there. Ah, yeah. I should do better, I think. I might end up putting a bolt through it, too. Because I don't want these to fail. Because they could have hundreds of, pow or hundreds of pounds of you know, straw against them or scrap metal. <laughs> but, yeah. That's me, he man in it. Is that corner? This corner not my best looking welds. Because I can't really see when I'm doing it upside down, but it'll work I think. I still need to weld this little wheel thing back on here it fell off and, uh, yeah. and yeah I'll do all that 
do each side, flip it over and do the other side. And then uh, this should be in place enough where I can start drilling in them to put the wood. I got my Rust-Oleum paint. Don't know if it's enough. That's all I got. <laughs> all my welds are double welded underneath as well, so that it's not wobbly anymore. It's steady. And uh, what I gotta do now is see them little screws. Yeah, those ones. Those were holding the plywood floor on. I'll uh, take my grinder and cut those off. And uh, then I'll uh, take this little uh, wiry brush that attaches to your drill and take all the rust off everywhere and paint her. One of the things I thought one of the things I thought was cool was this. This steel cable thing. It uh use this to wind it up. Or you, you flip it like this. Goes over there. And uh, it was used to make the pop up camper go up. But uh, I decided I think I'm gonna use it to uh Oh, uh, if like, uh, I'll add some more length to that cable, but if I wanted like, uh, say, uh, need a little lawnmower up here, and I didn't want to push it, I think that allowed me to just hand crank it and be able to pull it. I'm not sure. I'll have to see if it can actually pull weight. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, considering a pop-up camper probably weighs, a roof probably weighs, you know, anywhere between 150 to 300 pounds. I would say that could probably do it pretty easily. Here's the old trailer plug. That's where the um, control the lights and whatnot. Oh, this weird uh, cylinder thing. I'll just show you this. Let's see. There's like a rubber diaphragm in there and there's like, it's almost like your power steering booster on a car. These are for your brakes, trailer brakes. You have this little metal piece right here. It slides. I think it was at one time connected to something there or if it's broken off or if it always was like that. And you use this for pulling this little lever and you can move this back and forth, it's kind of rusty now. And that would lock the trailer brakes and uh, break them so that they wouldn't move when you were, I guess, parked somewhere where it was slanted or something like that. And uh, that's where it goes. There's each line, it's a hard line in there. And I guess they have some type of disc, disc brake system in this. But I'm probably just going to go ahead and cut it off to right about here, just in case I ever wanted to, and just leave that bit on there. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Still got to cut off this propane holder. What held the propane for the generator? And uh, yeah, put sides on it, paint it. First thing to do is paint it. Now this jack works surprisingly real well. This thing, real good. But yeah, that's my trailer. Before. I mean, uh, that was before. This is after. No, no, no. This is before. That one's after. See how much smaller it is. But you used it a good bit. I also took all the brass coloring off. But yeah, I got all the, most of the rust off. See what I did was the those, they just knock the we got, um, loose rust off. You can still see there's a good bit. I've done all the way to about this beam right here. At that point, oh, and I'm going to take more detail, but yeah. All of this, I've knocked all the loose rust off of it, and now I can uh, paint it with spray paint, and uh, it'll stick. Rust-Oleum is what I like to use, because it's already kind of rusty. But yeah. This half I haven't uh, taken the rust off yet, but this half I have, and I painted it. So that half looks good. Still got to do a little bit more down there. But yeah, she looks pretty. Yeah, there's still rust under there, but it's just, I took off the most, the bigger flaky pieces. And then, uh, that way the paint will stick, and it's rust only, so it stops rust. But yeah, that'll be next. Looks pretty, though. What I got at Northern's Tool Supply. Trailer hitch lights, welding rods, adapter for car, bolts.